Now, we should be very prepared now, because the world hates us. She has done a terrible job as Secretary of State. I mean, think of it. Putin comes out, he said, Donald Trump is brilliant, he's doing an amazing job, and he's leading the pack. Okay, that's nice. And she and my opponents, oh, isn't that terrible that Putin said, wouldn't it be nice if we could get along with the world? Wouldn't it be, seriously? No, no, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, they want me to refute his statement. How dare you say I'm brilliant? How dare? That's a... <laughs> Who's going to do that? And by the way, if he said it about any one of them, they would have been very happy. But the point is, we have to get along. The world has blown up around Barack Obama. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the largest crowd this building has ever seen. There's over 3,000 people still outside waiting to get in. Please welcome the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump! So incredible. We, we have had, no matter where we go, you know, it's a movement, folks. This is a movement. This is a movement. No matter where we go, no, it, it's amazing. We go to Dallas, we go to Oklahoma, we go all over. We went to, uh, the other night, Iowa, packed. Every place, New Hampshire, packed. Uh, every place we go to, it's like this. It's amazing. And just great, great people. And they actually had to tell over 3,000 people, go home, we'll come back, we'll do another one. But they had to go home. Would you like to leave and we'll let them come in? No? I don't think so. But we, they turned away a lot of people, and, which is too bad, actually. So maybe next time, I don't know. I think this is the largest room. I know it's a record for the room. You know, it has to be a record because every inch of the room is taken with people and they're standing, they're not sitting. So that's great. I love, we love setting records. We want the country to set records, right? So, you know, I, I, I do this and I love to do it and I talk about our success because that's ultimately what it's all about. I think we're going to do fantastically well in Iowa. I really think we're going to do great there. And I could say, oh, gee, if we came in the top four or five, I'm not, I'm looking to win everything. We want to run the table. We want to run it. Because that sends a signal. And, you know, we've been a little bit, we had to respond to Hillary. She came out with that. No. She came out, remember, she wrote, she said, he's got a, he's demonstrated a penchant. I demonstrated a penchant for sexism. Can you believe it? Me. Nobody respects women more than Donald Trump. That I can tell you. Nobody. Nobody. And, you know, when she said that, I had no choice, because I didn't start it. I had no choice. And I did have to mention her husband's situation. Okay? And that is now the biggest story on television by a factor of 10. So, we have to do it. You can't let people push you around. You can't let people tell lies. You can't do it. You know, it's interesting. Uh, one of the polls came out from CNBC, and, and they said that uh, if it's Trump against Hillary in the election, it will be the greatest voter turnout in the history of this country. I can see that. I can see it. I can see it. And they said all of these people that are going to come in new, that never vote, they never vote, they don't care, they're going to mostly, I'll tell you what, they're going to vote for Trump. That's why they're coming in, because they're so fed up with this system, this corrupt, horrible system. They're fed up with it. And they're fed up with those guys back there, the media. They are the worst. They're the worst. No, they're not. They're fed up. They're fed up with the media. I mean, I've got, and you know, not all bad. But there's so much dishonesty in the media. And I like to call it out. And one of the things that's really been amazing to me, and, and such it's been so beautiful to watch, the level of genius in the public. They get it. You know, they really get it. 
They want to marginalize us. They want to do all of this, and, and they want to make everybody look like, oh, gee. The, the level of genius, they fully understand. They know they're crooked. They know they're dishonest. And they really, otherwise, who gets worse publicity than me? <laughs> and yet I see a poll at 42%. And you know, you're talking about 15, 16 people. Started with 17. How are you? Started with 17 people. And you know, I'd be happy with 42 if we had three. Okay? Not thrilled. I'd like to be that over that 50 mark, but I think we're doing really well. And you know, it's interesting, but the debates, okay? So the debates, thank you. I love you too, darling. I love you. I do. I love you. I love everybody. You know what? The rooms, no matter where, whether it's stadiums or big ballrooms like this one, it's amazing. And there's love in the room. And I told the other night, I said, a friend of mine, very, very successful guy, who I would love to have negotiating against China. That's what we need, not these hacks that we have. No, no, I have guys. Carl Icahn endorsed me, great businessman. We have, I have great, great business people that want to be involved. And we're going to use, we have the best. We have the best in the world. We don't use them. We use political hacks. We use special interest people that really don't care about the country. They care about their deals. This is going to change so fast. You know, last year, $500 billion trade deficit with China. Think of it. 500. You know what 500 billion is? You do, you do $100 bills, you'd fill the room to the ceiling. $500 billion deficit, trade deficit with China. What are we? Are we? Yeah, I guess the answer is certainly, let's not blame us. Our leaders are stupid. And, and or, you have to say, and or, they have deals. Because what's happened is all of this money is being given to them by special interests, by all of these people, including lobbyists. And these lobbyists make our leaders do, our leaders, can you believe our leaders? This is what we're <laughs> But they make the leaders of our country do things that they don't even want to do because they've given them tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars. I mean, I look at this guy, Jeb Bush. He spent $59 million on his campaign, and he's down in the grave. He's nowhere. No, no, think of it. And it's got to be much more than that. It was actually $59 million a while ago. Every time I turn on an ad, I see an ad about Trump. I mean, it's not that bad an ad, either. It's like, you know, you're going to do an ad, do an ad. But. Look, he's a low-energy person, let's face it. We don't need low energy. We need lots of energy. But he spent, think of it, think of it. He spent $59 million. I spent nothing, right? Nothing. Now, I'm going to be spending, you probably saw, I'm going to spend now, we're going to start spending a lot of money because I don't want to take any chances. You know, it's, I love getting up. And for the last couple of months, I, I've been leading from practically the time I announced, right? And for the last, and leading a lot, I'm going to go over that because I go over polls. I love polls. I love polls. Now, when they, if they turn negative, I don't like them. <laughs> and I promise, if they turn negative, I'm not going to be talking about them. In fact, I get criticized all the time. You're always talking about your polls. One of these guys who's got two, he's a two. I'm at 42. And one of these guys who's a two said, he always talks about his polls. And I don't, and I wouldn't either if I had to. I swear I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it at all. But you know, I, I love to tell the story where I've spent nothing, and Bush has spent $59 million, but much higher than that. That's just, you know, because I see since then, I mean, just, you can't turn on this television without these commercials at Fox. Every two minutes, it's a commercial on Trump. You know what he did? It's false advertising. So I killed him in the debate. According to Reuters, according to everybody, Drudge, who's an amazing guy, by the way. If you don't know Drudge, Matt Drudge. Great. He's a great guy. But Drudge, 46%. The 46%, you have 15 people. Now, if you notice, a couple have dropped out, a couple more. But 15, 16 people, 46%. Time Magazine, 49%. Think of it, Slate, 51%. U.S. News and World Report, 69% said, I won the debate. I won the debate, right? PBS, Public Broadcasting System, 69% said Trump won. No, you know, it's amazing. Um, 
We have Washington Times at 62 percent, CBS 59 percent, Fox 62 percent, Fox Las Vegas 62 percent. So they all say, then I go back home after the debate. I like to see how did I do? Did I look good? Looking good is very important, right? <laughs> Sometimes it's not as much like what you say. It's how did you look? Oh, I look good. Didn't sound too good, but that's OK. You wonder, is that a good trade -off? But. I go home, I watch, and the pundits will say, I mean, they can't totally kill me, because I know what's happening. We know what's happening. Well, Mr. Trump was OK tonight. He was. I won every, every single online poll. I won. And then, here's Bush. So Bush does an ad, and he takes me, and he was talking about, you know, something, and he made a statement. And then I killed him. I mean, he, by the way, I'm at 69%. He's at 1% he got. He came in last. He takes the ad, and I shouldn't even talk about him. He's down to two or three, I, but I, it bothers me when I see a guy spending, you know, $60 million on ads against me, a lot of it, right? I say, why is he doing this? Doesn't he have something better? He should go home, just relax. <laughs> no, honestly, he should go home and relax. He shouldn't be wasting his time, but it does. I say, why is this guy spending all this money? Now he's spending it actually against a couple of other guys. They were also very weak ads. Were. But here's my ad. So he made a statement, and after that, his spin people said, oh, he was great. He took on Trump. He took on Trump. <laughs> and then, and then, and that was it. So I responded. So he asked me a question. The question was fine, you know, professionally written. So he asked me a question. Good. I give him an answer, I blow him away, right? Everybody says Trump won the debate. Everybody. And that's it. So the ad is him asking the question, and I'm standing here like this because I haven't. In fact, you see in one of them, I'm just about ready to open my mouth. But he doesn't let me respond. That's almost false advertising, isn't it? You know. <laughs> so I mention it. Hillary is a disaster. I mean, Hillary. <laughs> Hillary's controlled by her money. So is Jeb. So is, by the way, I'm the only one self-funding my campaign. I'm self-funding. <laughs> You know, one of the things that makes me happy, I heard one of the commentators this morning said, you know, I've been watching this stuff for 50 years. I've never seen anything like what's happened with Trump. One of them actually said, one of them, I'm special. You're special. I like you. I'm special. Isn't that nice? That's a very, every once in a while, somebody can say something that hits you. Where are you? Who said that? Wow. So nice. Thank you. That's a nice one, right? That's like, you know, every once in a while there's a statement that's either nice or brutal. I think low energy was a brutal statement, right? And by the way, low energy can be applied to Hillary. I just don't like to use the same thing twice on one of my enemies, right? Because I consider them enemies. We view this as war. Don't we view this as war? It's war. It's, it's war. And so you don't like to use it. I hate to give it up. What? How are you going to help my 11-year-old daughter? Oh, we're going to help your daughter. We're going to help the country. That's called helping the daughter. We're going to help your country. So here's the story. So we are in a situation where we have incompetent leadership, where our trade deals are killing us. Our military is not prepared. General Ordiano, when he left just recently, he said we are less prepared now than at any time that he can remember. And I think he went back to the beginning. But let's say Second World War, OK? That's enough. Now, we should be very prepared now, because the world hates us. She has done a terrible job as Secretary of State. I mean, think of it. Putin comes out. He said, Donald Trump is brilliant. He's doing an amazing job, and he's leading the pack. OK, that's nice. And she and my opponents say, oh, isn't that terrible that Putin said, wouldn't it be nice if we could get along with the world? Wouldn't it be? Seriously. No, no, wouldn't it be nice? I mean, they want me to refute his statement. How dare you say I'm brilliant? How dare? That's a... <laughs> Who's going to do that? And by the way, if he said it about any one of them, they would have been very happy. But the point is, we have to get along. The world has blown up around Barack Obama. Now, I don't know if you saw his recent release. They were talking about the Department of State, State Department, and they said very strongly, you know, the things that they've done. Well, they couldn't find it, because what have they done that's good? And they said, bringing peace to Syria. Did you see that? So instead of saying they made a mistake, call it a typo, they made a mistake. 
They're trying to justify. Well, we meant we're working on it. Can you believe bringing peace to Syria? The, the world is blowing up. The migration is Syria. They say one of their achievements for the year is bringing peace to Syria. And the whole world's talking about it. It's, it's the level of stupidity is incredible. I'm telling you, I used to use the word incompetent. Now I just call them stupid. I went to an Ivy League school. I'm very highly educated. I know words. I have the best words. I have the best. But there's no better word than stupid. Right? There is none. There is none. There's no, there's no, there's no word like that. So we are going to turn things around. But, and if we have Hillary, I got to tell you, I just saw it where for the last week she's been hitting me really hard with the women card, okay? Really hard. And I had to say, okay, that's enough. That's enough. And we did a strong number. She's not going to win. And by the way, I love the concept. I love, love, love having a woman president. Can't be her. She's horrible. She's horrible. And you know who really don't, I'll tell you who does not like, yeah, we'll get Ivanka. Good. Let's do Ivanka. Let's go. But, but I'll tell you who doesn't like Hillary are women. Women don't like Hillary. I see it all the time. And always so theatrical. Mr. Trump said this and that and this. Uh, oh. And you just, I, I actually, I shouldn't do it. I just have to turn off the television so many times. She just gives me a headache. But you know, although I think last night I gave her a big headache. I can imagine. I can imagine those discussions. But you have to hit back hard. And you can't let them push you around. And today she gave a speech and she never even mentioned my name. You know, in the debate I was mentioned nine times. I mean everything, through all of them, but her. I was mentioned nine times. None of the other candidates were mentioned. And then she came out with the sexism, which is so nonsense. And, but she's playing that card. And then I had to hit her back, so I hit her back and I talked about her husband and the abuse of women and the tremendous abuse. No, it's tremendous abuse. I mean, you look at it, it's tremendous abuse. And I talked about that. And now, today, the television is going crazy. And she gets up, makes a speech that doesn't even mention anything about me with sexism or anything else. I wonder why. I wonder why. And, and remember this, it's really important. Uh, a poll just came out where we're tied. Another one came out a couple of weeks ago, Fox, where I'm leading by four or five points against her individually. We're doing great. I haven't even focused on her yet. Look at the people I focused on. I don't want to really knock them. I don't want to mention their names. But you know, of those people that are all gone, they were all people that attacked me. Wouldn't it be nice if our country could have that same thing? You attack and they're, boom, gone. And if we could do it verbally, you know, if we could do it verbally, that's even better, right? You know, who wants to use our military? By the way, we are going to build the strongest, the best, the most powerful military ever. 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 And we're going to take care of our vets. We're going to take care of our vets. Because they are being treated horribly. But we're going to build the strongest, most powerful military ever. And let me just tell you, let me just tell you a little secret. It's the cheapest thing we can do. We're never going to have to use it. I don't think we're going to have to use it. Don't forget, they talk about my tone. I remember when Jeb and Hillary the same day Mr. Trump's tone is not nice. They're chopping off Christians' heads in Syria and other places, and they want me to have a nice tone. I'm supposed to be, oh, isn't, isn't life wonderful, okay? Look, we've got to be tough. We've got to be smart. We've got to have heart, too. We've got to have heart. We've got to take care of people. We've got to fix our health care program. This Obamacare is a disaster. You people know. You people know. Obamacare is a total catastrophe. It's going to be repealed and replaced. It will die in 17 anyway. I don't know if you heard what's happening, but it's so bad. All the people that they didn't think were signing up are signing up, and the other people that are really paying for it aren't signing up. And your rates are going up 25, 35, 45 percent. Your deductibles are so high that unless you get hit by a tractor, you're never going to be able to use your deductible. You're never going to be able to use it. So Obamacare is a disaster. We're going to repeal it. We're going to replace it. There are so many great things we can do on health care. So many great things.
And it'll cost you much less money, and it'll be great. It'll be great. I mean, you're signing into programs and things that you'll never, ever use. You know that. And you're paying for it, and you'll never, ever use them. So we'll get that straightened out. We're going to straighten out a lot of things. We're going to straighten out Common Core. Common Core is dead. It's going to be dead. It's going to be dead. When I look at parents, and I, I see local parents in Iowa and New Hampshire and South Carolina, I went to a school, and I saw the parents, they, they love their children. They want that, they want education, they love, they don't care about money, they don't care about anything, they love their children. And it's local. And they get together, and they do wonderful programs, they're smart people, as opposed to getting it done by bureaucrats that are getting big fat checks in Washington. I mean, we have such talent in this country, and we don't use it. So Obamacare, dead. Common Core, gone. We're going to get rid of it. Department of Education, we're going to get rid of it. We're bringing education to a local level. One thing on education. So in the world, we are ranked number 28. There are third world countries that are ranked better than us in education, and many other things. And yet, per pupil, we are number one by far. There's nobody close. Number two isn't even close. So we spend more money per pupil than any country in the world, and we're ranked number 28, which is way down, way down the bottom, essentially. I mean, it's, it's, can you imagine we're ranked number 28, we're number one? And that's what I do like saying about my campaign. I spent less money than anybody else, and I have the best result. I'm number one by a lot, and I spent no money. I mean, my plane cost me some money, but I spent no ads. Took a little radio ad in Iowa, but I didn't do that. I, did, I think the station's so lovely, you want to know the truth. But I spent, essentially, no money. And then you have all these other guys spending vast, and they're like the way the United States is run. Now, why would we put, like Jeb, like some of the others, it's not only Jeb Bush, they spend money. I see Rubio, the ads all day long, the, you know, the black background, he's got like, Thing. Should have put something like that behind him, right? Right there, the flag. No, no. And I like him. I think he's a nice guy. But I see these ads, you know, with the with the, the backdrop and and it's just somber. It's not good. I don't think it's good. So think of it. I spent no money. Number one. Others spent. Others spent. They will have spent hundreds of millions of dollars, and they're not even in the race. That's what we need for our country. What? Okay, I got 15,000. I don't know what the hell he means by that, but that's okay. So, but I think he's a fan. I don't think he's a pro. Are you a protester? No. Okay, no, he likes Trump. Okay, he's not a protester. I love you. Okay. You know, the only time, don't worry about it. The only time the cameras, Focus on the crowd is when we have a protest. Because I always have, like, look at this ballroom, packed. I always have the biggest crowds. And I go home, and my wife said, were there many people I watched you on television tonight? I said, when? I had 20,000 people. The whole arena. She said, they didn't show it. They have right on your face. So I have 20,000 people. I had 20,000 in Oklahoma, 35,000 in Mobile, Alabama. Nobody knows, because those cameras stay right on your face. And I think they can't move. You know, I think they may be fixed because modern cameras may be. <laughs> Except every time there's a guy that stands up protesting, you know, they're on drugs or something, because some of these guys, they start, they don't even know what the hell they're doing there. All of a sudden, the cameras swerve and they perfect shots. And I like it because then it shows how big the crowds are. So, you know, sometime I think I'm going to put in some false protesters. I'll put in some friendly protests. It's, it's the only way I'm going to be able to get them to move. So, so when we started, I talked about trade. I talked about the border. I talked about a lot of things. And I started on June 16th and in Trump Tower, the famous escalator ride. And it takes guts to run for president. I'll tell you, you know, it's like I never did this before. And, you know, then they tell you you're on a debate. We had the largest debating. We had the largest audience in the history of cable television. Then CNN, a couple of weeks later, had 23 million, Fox had 24 million, CNN had 23 million, the largest audience in the history of CNN. Now they're there and the camera's on live right now, I mean, you know. It's the largest audience in the history of CNN. Now the debates used to be, if you go back four years or eight years, you know, whenever you, the cycles came up, nobody even wanted, they didn't want the debates. 
I think they were forced to take them for licensing. Nobody wanted the debates. They drew nothing. But now they're drawing 24 men. Now they want to have more debates. Oh, can we have more? Can we have more? Can they go three hours? Remember when they had the one go three hours? I said, no, I'm not doing three hours. It's too long. Who wants? I could stand up here for 50 hours. But who the hell wants to sit home watching three hours of this stuff, right? <laughs> Mr. Trump, you have 30 seconds. What would you do about ISIS? Oh, great. Thank you. And, and by the way, that question, I hate those questions. You know why? Because I want to be unpredictable. I don't want to tell ISIS what I'm going to do to knock the hell out of it. I hate it. I hate it. Remember, I said very strongly, keep the oil for what? You've been watching. I mean, four years. I've been, get the oil, get the oil, get the oil. Because who's going to get the oil? Iran is taking over Iraq. We made a deal for Iran, done by some of the dumbest people on earth, on our side. We gave them everything. They want it. We don't even get our prisoners back. And now Iran wants to start negotiating separately for the. Can you believe it? I go crazy. We would have gotten them back. All you had to do is say, we want our prisoners back. They would have said no. I would have said, I want them back. You don't understand me. I want them back. They would have said, no, we won't do that. I would have said, bye-bye, and I would have left. Then I would have doubled up the sanctions. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you that within 24 hours, they would have called back and they'll say, you've got your prisoners, can we talk? And I would have never given them 150 billion. I would have never given them the money. I would have never given them. They're using that. They don't have to make nuclear. They can buy it. Why are they going to make it? Then we have the nuclear, where they have self-inspection. How about the area, you know, the big area? They don't want us there. Oh, I wonder why. They don't want us there. So they self-inspect, OK? Then they have the 24-day inspection, but the self-inspection is the beauty. We think you're making nuclear weapons here. Well, let us go check, Mr. President. We'll check. No, sir, we're not making nuclear weapons. Uh, nobody, no, we're not. We would never do a thing like that. These are people that have deceived us. They've lied to us. They're a terrorist state. But, and I used to say it's the worst deal that I've ever seen negotiated. And by the way, just to finish, prisoners. So they'd come back, we get our prisoners. But then when I hear the other day that now this deal's done, it's all done. And now I hear they want to negotiate to get. And what did they say? They said very strongly, they said, we are going to want a lot for the prisoners. That's our, we're starting off. We're going to want a lot. Now, we've already taken off the sanctions. They're already rich as hell. What, what's going on there? You, that's why I say, I mean, some people say it's worse than stupidity. There's something going on that we don't know about. I mean, honestly. And you almost think it. I'm not saying that, and I'm not a conspiracy person. <laughs> she said, we are. We're saying it. I, half the people in this room are saying it. I'm trying to be a like, you know, I'm just hoping they're just stupid people, OK? which they are. Or there's something going on. Because it's, it's inconceivable. You know, do you ever see where some things are so bad that it can't be, that nobody can do what they did, right? Nobody. So Iran now wants to negotiate separately for the But In other words, that deal's done. Now we want to start a whole new deal. And they want a lot. We want a lot. And I just, I want to just shoot the television, you know? Because they would have had it just for saying. And you know, when they asked Kerry and Obama, the deal was made. Everybody knows it's a horrible deal. It's going to need to, it's going to lead to tremendous nuclear proliferation. And they're so rich now. You know, they became $150 billion. To, that's, they became so rich. And many other things that you don't even know about. Most people don't even know what the agreement says. But I'll tell you what. When you look at what we're doing, we're not going to have, if we keep going like this, folks, we're not going to have a country left. We're not going to have a country. We're not going to have our country. And we're like a dumping ground for the world. We're a dumping ground. They want to take these mig the migrants, you know, and I feel terrible about the migration caused by Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. They're the ones that caused it. They go and they knock the hell out of Gaddafi. Okay, so Gaddafi, they back rebels who end up killing the ambassador and the other young people. You know, the, the, the ambassador was riding in a jeep, a, one of our jeeps, of course, a military jeep holding the Libyan flag and, you know, freedom, 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 and then he gets killed by the same people. That, so we backed people that turned out to be far worse than Gaddafi. 
Look what we did in Iraq. Look what we did in Iraq. I mean, what the hell do we get? We spent $2 trillion. And that was as of a year and a half ago. I keep saying $2 trillion. It's a lot more than that. We spent $2 trillion. We have thousands of deaths. And I'm not even talking other side. You talk about other side. You're talking about hundreds of thousands, maybe millions. You have thousands of deaths. We have wounded warriors who I love, all of. These guys are the toughest. These are the greatest people. No, these are the greatest people. And then what happens? We leave. And we have a president that announces the date of when we're leaving. So I said, man, if I'm the enemy, I'm just going to go away for 18 months, right? He, had, he gave a date. We are leaving Iraq. We will be gone by such and such a time. I said, I'm just sitting there watching, and I'm saying, man, that's really stupid. <laughs> because believe me, the enemy doesn't want to be killed. You know, you hear so much, oh, they want to go with the virgins up to wherever they go, right? They don't want to. They want to live. They want to live. And they want to take care of their families, always their families. Remember that, because their families know what's going on, okay? You think their wives don't know what they're planning? You think their kids don't know exactly what daddy's doing when daddy's going to fly into the World Trade Center? You think they don't know? They know exactly what's going on. Remember that. And frankly, I think they have more love for their family's life than they do for their own life, okay? But they still want to live. So here's Obama, gives an exact date. He gives an exact date. So they pull back, and everyone says, oh, we're doing so well. Look, we're doing so well. The enemy, why should they fight when they know in 18 months they can go in and take the place? So what happens? So we have ISIS taking a lot of oil. I said, take the oil. Remember when we left? I was opposed to going in because I said, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. Because you had Iraq, and you had Iran. And I said, they fight. And they're always fighting for decades and decades, for generations. They fight. That's what they do. They fight. How we ever got involved in this mess is hard to believe. They fight, and they were equal, militarily. They go this way, 10 feet. They go this way, 10 feet. Then they rest a couple of years. Then they start fighting again. Then Saddam Hussein throws a little gas. Everyone goes crazy, oh, it's using gas. They go back, forth. It's the same. And they were stabilized. And I said, if you go after one or the other, in this case Iraq, you're going to destabilize the Middle East. That's what's going to happen. You're going to destabilize the Middle East. And that's exactly what happened. We totally destabilized the Middle East. We have now migrations, largely because of what's happened afterwards. You know, Iraq was horrible. It was stupid to go in. We should have never gone in. We shouldn't have gone out the way we went out. And we shouldn't have given dates. I mean, I would have probably said, we're going to stay forever. And they would have said, oh, man. And then keep going, keep going. Eventually, they would get tired. They said, this guy's crazy. I mean, he's never going to leave. And you'll make a deal. But when you announce you're leaving in 18 months or whatever the hell he said, they just pulled back. And then as soon as we left, they come in. OK? So they have the oil. You know who the biggest beneficiary of the oil is, right? China. China. Always China. I love China. I love Mexico. Their leaders are too smart for us. We have no border. We will build a wall. Mexico will pay for the wall, by the way. We're building a wall. We're going to have a border. And people are going to come into our country, but they're going to come in through a legal process. They're not coming in the way they're coming in now, just walking in like nothing. They're going to come in, but they're going to come through a legal process. So with Iraq, so we give them a date, and they take over. We didn't take the oil. So for four years, I've been talking about it. Then because of Paris, all of a sudden, they start bombing the oil. But I didn't want to just bomb the oil. I want to take the oil. They're bombing. Bombing. Great. What's going to happen after that? So we're bombing. And you know, we're not really bombing it because they're still selling it. I say, how can they open it? Because he's afraid he's going to pollute the atmosphere. No, this is serious. Now think of it. He talks about the carbon footprint. And yet he'll fly a very old. Air Force One, an old Boeing 747 with the old engines and, you know, spewing stuff. So he's got a problem with the carbon footprint. You can't use hairspray because hairspray is going to affect the ozone. I'm trying to figure out, let's see, I'm in my room in New York City and I want to put a little spray so that I can, <laughs> right? Right? But I hear where they don't 
to use hairspray. They want me to use the pump because the other one, which I really like better than going bing, 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 and then it comes out in big lobs, right? And you're stuck in your hair and you say, oh my God, I got to take a shower again. My hair's all screwed up, right? I want to use hairspray. They say, don't use hairspray. It's bad for the ozone. So I'm sitting in this concealed apartment, this concealed unit. You know, I really do live in a very nice apartment. But it's sealed. It's beautiful. I don't think anything gets out. And I'm not supposed to be using hairspray. But think of it. So Obama is always talking about the uh, global warming. That global warming is our biggest and most dangerous problem, OK? No, no, think of it. I mean, even if you're a believer in global warming, ISIS is a big problem. Russia's a problem. China's a problem. We got a lot of problems. By the way, the maniac in North Korea is a problem. He actually has nuclear weapons, right? That's a problem. We got a lot of problems. We got a lot of problems. That's right, we don't win anymore. He said, we want to win. We don't win anymore. We're going to win a lot. If I get elected, we're going to win a lot. We're going to win so much. True. We're going to win a lot. We're going to win a lot. We're going to win so much, you're all going to get sick and tired of winning. You're going to say, oh, no, not again. I'm only kidding. You never get tired of winning, right? Never. But think of it. So Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and the, that. And a lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, OK? It's a hoax. A lot of it. And look, I want clean air and I want clean water. That's my global. I want clean, clean crystal water. And I want clean air. And we can do that. But we don't have to destroy our businesses. We don't have to destroy our country. And by the way, China isn't abiding by anything. They're buying all of our coal. We can't use coal anymore, essentially. They're buying our coal, and they're using it. Now, when you talk about the planet, it's so big out there. We're here. They're there. It's like they're our next-door neighbor, right, in terms of the universe. Miss Universe, by the way, made a great deal when I sold it. Oh, did I get rich? <laughs> that was a great deal. Oh. You know, they broke my choppers on that. They said, he talks about illegal immigration. We're not going to put him on television. First of all, the Univision's being sued like crazy. You wouldn't believe it. And NBC, I made a great deal with them, just like an amazing deal. Far more than I would have ever gotten. I mean, I made an unbelievable deal. Far more than I ever would have gotten if I said, I think I'm going to sell it if times were normal, right? Isn't it amazing the way that stuff can work out? But I love Miss Universe, and I love the universe. But think of it. So China is spewing up all this stuff. And we're holding back. And with China, you know, we signed these agreements where we have to do it now. They have to do it within 30 or 35 years. I don't think they're going to be doing it. It's like Japan. If somebody attacks Japan, we have to immediately go and start World War III. OK? If we get attacked, Japan doesn't have to help us. Somehow that doesn't sound so fair. Right? Does that sound good? So South Korea, I order televisions. I order thousands of televisions a year. I order televisions because I have a lot of stuff, and I like nice brand new. They're all made in South Korea, most other than Sony. And Sony, in all fairness, has lost its way. But a lot of them, Samsung, uh, all of them. I mean, they're all pretty much uh, uh, all of them, right? I think just about. But I order thousands of televisions. They're all from South Korea. So we have 28,000 people on the border separating South Korea from this maniac in North Korea. We get nothing. What do we get nothing? Why? They're making a fortune. It's an economic behemoth. A lot of you don't know, we protect Germany. Germany. Mercedes-Benz. How many people have a Mercedes-Benz? We protect Germany. It's an economic behemoth. We protect Saudi Arabia. They were, during the good oil days, now it's probably half, which is fine. But during the good oil, they were making a billion, listen to this, a billion dollars a day. And we protect them. Our military, but they pay us peanuts, not, like nothing. And then if we want to buy, if we want to move to another location, well, that's very expensive if we do that. We want to charge us rent. I mean, look, we are run by people that are so bad. They're so out of their league. And I see it. I see it on the stage. You know, a lot of them are nice people. You know, a lot of people think I don't like these people. I do like them. But they don't have business sense. They don't have business ability. They don't have common sense. They're politicians. They're all talk. They're no action. When I say... Folks, when I say we're going to build a wall, most of them say, you can't build a wall. We'll build a wall. In China, 2,000 years ago, <laughs> they built the Great Wall of China, which is bigger than any wall we're thinking about, okay? 
The Great Wall of China goes 18,000 miles. We have 2,000 miles, of which we really only need 1,000 miles, because you have a lot of natural barriers, right, that are extremely tough to get across. We have 1,000 miles. So China has 18,000 or 13,000 miles, and we have 1,000 miles. We have modern cranes. We have Caterpillar tractors. I want to use Caterpillar. I don't want to use Komatsu. Yeah. Made in America. Even my hats, they're made in America. It wasn't easy to find a guy could do those hats. You know what I'm talking about. I see so many knockoffs of my hat, right? Make America great again. I see these things, they're out of plastic. They're out of all sorts of crap. Mine are made in America. And honestly, they do a great job, but they don't produce as many as I'd like because, frankly, there's a big, I mean, it's amazing. Those hats are amazing. But I wanted to have it made. And you know why I, I wanted it? I wanted it anyway. But I also knew that as soon as the hats came out, and other things, we have a website. As soon as the hats came out, I knew the press would be calling. And it's true. First hour when the hats were announced, I get a call from the New York Times. Mr. Trump, where are those hats made? I said, America. I knew it. I knew it. Because, as you know, if I would have said China, I would have been in big, big trouble. But they're being knocked off all over the world. I mean, I see hats, I, they're like helmets. I see them all. But what are you going to do? But here's the story. We got to build a wall. So when I talk and when I'm up on the stage with these guys, these people, wonderful people, and a very nice woman, Carly, she's a nice woman. When I'm up on the stage with them, they think, I'm crazy when I say Mexico. Because I always say, we're going to build a wall. It's going to be a great wall. It's going to be a real wall. See the ceiling? The ceiling is peanuts compared to the height of the wall I'm talking about. I'm talking about if they ever get up there, they're not coming down because it's too dangerous. All right? You ever see what they do now that we have these little walls? They build ramps. They build a ramp. I say, wouldn't it be cheaper just to knock the wall down and just... And then they drive over it with Jeeps loaded up with drugs. Do you see this? They build ramps. It was a picture in Time magazine. It's a ramp. A little ramp that goes over the wall and down. So they have a Jeep. Over, down, boom, make money. We get the drugs. Think of it. We Build a wall is right. You got to build a wall. We get the drugs. They get the cash. Not so good, right? We don't like that deal. Our politicians don't know. They don't know. So when I say Mexico is going to pay for it, these guys are on the stage with me. They're not business people. They don't understand. Mexico makes a fortune off the United States. No, number one, we give them a lot of money. In addition to that, they're taking our businesses. They're making, if you talk about a trade deficit, I'll tell you what, Mexico, in a certain way, is in a mini version, the new China. Mexico is making an absolute fortune. Peanuts compared to the cost of the wall. Let's say the cost of the wall is $10 billion. That's a good, I can do a great job at 10. I think we'll have a lot of money left over. Somebody else would have, you know, they, and by the way, 20 years ago, they wanted to build a wall. People that are f opposed to it now, they wanted to stop, and they wanted to build a wall. You know one of the reasons they didn't build a wall? Because of the Environmental Protection Agency. They couldn't get an environmental impact study approved. Can you believe it? Because there was a toad or a turtle or a snake or something was in the way. <laughs> now think of it. In China, in the, in the South China Sea, there were these low-level land masses that were covered by water, but pretty close to the top. China sends in massive excavators, and they're going, boah, they're building military fortresses in the South China Sea. And a friend of mine who's one of the biggest and richest people in China, he's a great guy. They're great people. They're fine. They're just too smart. I mean, the leaders are too smart for our people. They won't be too smart when I put my people there. <laughs> <laughs> when they call up, We'd like to speak to the donor that is negotiating it. No, no, the donor now is uh, Carl Icahn. You're going to speak to Carl Icahn. You know Carl, great businessman. You have so many people they call, all these business people call. So, a friend of mine, so I call him, I say, you're actually doing that. And then jokingly, I said, how long did it take to get started? Did you have to get an environmental impact study approved in order to excavate? He looked at me, he goes, I, I hope you're kidding when you say that. They conceived of the idea, they started digging four hours later, okay? There's no, you know, go through 25 years of environmental impact, you're gonna hurt the snail, you're gonna hurt this, you're gonna... They're doing a big thing. They excavated massive, massive, take a look, massive, the biggest excavator, they're ripping the hell out of that ocean. 
they're ripping it and they're taking that dirt and they're putting it and they're building airfields and they're building forts. We couldn't do it because, just like I said for the wall, legitimately, they couldn't get an environmental impact statement. Now, that's probably not the only reason it didn't happen. I heard their costs were too high. With me, that's easy. You know, I'm doing the old post office in Washington. I'm under budget. I'm ahead of schedule. Hey, look at, look at the campaign. Guys are 59 million and he's down at the bottom. I'm nothing and I'm at the top. It's the same thing. I actually said, I, it's funny, the other day I got this great review. They said, Trump is a great speaker. The crowd is spellbound, but he has one problem. And I'm reading, I want to see. The problem is he speaks through the applause. In other words, like I say that, you applaud, I start talking before you finish your applause. And you know why? Because I'm so excited because we have so much potential. It's true. I don't want to wait for your frickin' applause. We have, I have so many, we have, we have so much potential. There's so many things to do. I don't really sort of want to wait. I want to do it. And I just noticed, I did it again. You were getting ready to give a big applause because you like that. And I'm speaking. I kill the applause. But he's right, he's right. But except I'm not a speaker. What I am is a doer. I get things done. I get things done. So, so when the people up on the stage with me, and Hillary, Hillary doesn't have a clue. By the way, you talk about low energy. She has lower energy than Jeb Bush, which is hard to believe. She does. And I'll tell you, and I've been saying it, and maybe it's rude, maybe it's not, but it doesn't matter. We have a much bigger problem. We have to save our country. So if I'm rude, and if people think I'm rude, I'm actually a nice person. I have a big heart. I want to help people. I want to help the migration. I want to do a safe zone in Syria. I don't want them coming here. We don't know who these people are. They're undocumented. They're undocumented. And we should do a safe zone over there. We should have the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia, and these states are not spending. They got to spend. They got to pay. You know, we're protecting them. We're doing, they wouldn't be there for two minutes if we were not protecting them. They got to start paying, taking anybody. Okay, how about Germany taking millions of people? Can you believe what she's doing to that country? And she was the person of the year, and I wasn't. Everybody said Trump was supposed to. Hey, what are you gonna do? I think she's made, I think, I think she's made, I think she's made a terrible mistake. We'll find out, time will tell. They're having tremendous crime problems. I think she's made a terrible mistake. But what I like is in Syria, with other people's money, meaning the Gulf states and others, and Germany and others, because look, Germany's paying a fortune to accept all these people. They'll give us the money. We do a massive safe zone. And then eventually, when this whole catastrophe straightens out, which I'll probably be able to get it straightened out, I understand that stuff. But when it's straightened out, they can go back home to their country, you know, to their area. It's interesting. I have thousands of people that work for me, thousands. And I have people that come from far. They're all here legally. Don't worry about it. I use E-Verify and lots. But, but I have people. I have people. Oh, they go and check. These guys go check. They went into the old post office checking. Everybody walked out. Are you here legally? Are you here legally? They said they found one person out of hundreds and hundreds. I don't believe it, okay? I don't believe it. But, but you know, it's possible somebody said, hey, we do have 11 million people in the country, and it's probably a much higher number than that, okay? It's probably a much higher number. But we have to do something about it, and we're going to do. So I just want to finish by saying this. Look, we have a situation that's out of control. Our country is a dumping ground for the rest of the world. We're laughed at by the rest of the world. And when I started this journey, and it's a journey, and I do love you people, I, you're amazing people. And by the way, you're so smart. You know, a lot of times they'll say, well, Mr. Trump's people are blue collar. I love blue collar. I'm honored by that. But they're not blue collar. I mean, we have blue collar, and we have executives, and we have young people. They said, it, the audience is old. It's not older. The audience is young. The other night in Iowa, I told that, and I said, we have so many young people, and the place erupted. They're all young people. We have an amazing thing happening. It's just... Look, that's their way of marginalizing, not even me, it's marginalizing you. It's disgusting. I mean, it's disgusting. But when I started this journey, and that's what it is, it's a journey, and it's a movement that's taking place. It's a movement. Remember the old days, silent majority? It's not right. It's a noisy majority. People are angry. It's a noisy majority. These aren't silent people anymore. I go to people you can't even hear. This is an amazing thing that's happened. I received a call from one of the biggest reporters, who happens to be liberal, but that's okay. I mean, we can have a couple of them, right? But a guy who's really respected. 
recently. And he said, how does it feel? I said, how does what feel? He said, what you have done has never been done in the history of politics in the United States. I mean, even CNN said number one political story of the year is Trump. You know what number two was? ISIS. ISIS was two. I'd rather reverse it. Let ISIS be one, let me be two, because I want to knock the hell out of them and make me number one next year. Make me number one next year. But this reporter, who's a, a great intellect, actually, and, and a very smart guy, very good guy, he said, he said, what you've done has never been done before in this country. Newt Gingrich was on a television show the other day. He said, this is one of the great phenomena I've ever seen in politics. Nobody's ever seen it. Because crowds like this, forget it. I mean, it's only confined. If this venue, were, again, they sent 3,000 people home. Can you believe it? Three, more than 3,000. It's, it's unbelievable what's happening. It's beautiful what's happening. It's beautiful what's happening. But Newt Gingrich said he's never seen anything like this. But he said to me, the reporter, he said, never been done before. I said, well, you know, it's fine, but if I don't win, it's just a waste of time. He goes, no, no, no. What you've done is incredible. He said, even if you don't win, what you've done is incredible. You've totally changed the landscape of politics. No, but, no, don't applaud. Don't applaud. Don't applaud. He said, you've totally changed the landscape of politics. It's forever going to be different. Your campaign, there's never been anything like it. Okay, he was all very nice. I said, you don't understand. You don't understand. If I don't win, I will consider this, and I mean this, a total and complete waste of time. I really do. So, because we're not going to do anything. It's wonderful. Oh, good, I had nice crowds. They'll write about me every once in a while. Every two years, I'll have a story. Trump brand is rather a good campaign. If, if we don't win, to me, and honestly, you should feel the same thing. If we don't win, it's a total waste of time. Because you have somebody else in there, they won't be able to do what I do. They, they're not going to be able to. And even if you get one of these Republicans in, like I didn't finish the Mexican, so the wall. When I say Mexico's going to pay, they all laugh. They all go, <laughs> they think it's funny. Honestly, these are people, they think it's funny. They're laughing, now, you know, lightly, like, oh, oh that's so funny. <laughs> They're going to pay for the wall, folks. They're making billions and billions and billions of dollars on deficits that we have with Mexico. The wall is peanuts. They're going to pay for the wall. But I mention it, now they don't laugh because they're starting to agree with me. And then the other day, one of the people said, it was Ted Cruz, who's a nice guy, but he said, we're going to build a wall at the southern border. I said, whoa. And my wife is sitting. Where did that come from, right? No. Ted's a good guy. But he said, at, on one of, I think he was on Fox, he was being interviewed. And he said, we're going to build a wall at the southern border. He didn't say Mexico was going to pay. He hasn't gotten that far yet, but believe me, that's going to happen. See, they're all trying to catch up with me. Because when I did this stuff, it was very out there. Now, I'm the one that everybody wants to sort of aspire to. But what happens is, so Ted's up and he's talking. And, you know, routinely, we're going to have the border, we're going to have this, that, and we're going to build a wall. My wife is sitting there. She's, darling, did you hear that? He just said they're going to build a wall. That's the first time I've ever, you know, that's what you say. She hasn't heard that from any other candidate. Okay, so we're going to build a wall. Mexico's going to pay for it. There are so many things we're going to do. But when I, when I started the journey, it was amazing. I came down, took courage. I went down into the lobby of Trump Tower on the escalator with Melania. I have never seen, it looked like the Academy Awards, the press. We have a lot of press here today, all live. Look at all those live cameras. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when I came down, when I came down in the escalator, we came down and I said, we're going to do things. And I mentioned illegal immigration. You wouldn't even be talking about illegal, it wasn't even on the radar. Nobody was talking about illegal immigration. Is that right? Now it's one of the big subjects. And that's why, and one of the beautiful polls that came out, and I'm so proud of it, CNN just came out with a poll a couple of, I guess a week ago, 36% for Trump, second is 16, third is 14, then 12, so they're way down. But on the economy, they give me 55, 55%. That's with 16 people at the time. On the budget, I mean, I understand, the budget, the economy, I win, I win it hands down, all right. But listen to this, on illegal immigration, I'm almost at 50%. And on ISIS, likewise, almost at 50%. So people want to be protected. They want to feel safe. They need strength. They need toughness. They need smarts. 
I don't want to be tough. You know, I know a lot of tough guys, but they're not smart. And they're the, they're the easiest. You can be tough. You got to be smart. Let's start smart first. You got to be smart, tough. You got to be tough because the world is trying to take advantage of us. So what happens is this. I came out, I started, I did it. I was, oh, that first couple of weeks with illegal immigration and Mexico and all of this stuff. Then Kate was killed in San Francisco and Jamil was killed in Los Angeles. Jamil Shaw, an unbelievable young man, was killed, just shot right through the head by an illegal immigrant. Kate was shot by a guy who came in five or six times, shot in the back. Uh, so many great people. That, that's, these are two, so many. And then you have the economy and the jobs that are being lost and people aren't paying taxes and all of this stuff, right? And all of a sudden, people are coming over. And I'd say the wall, and now they're starting to say the wall. We have to be progressive in our thinking. When I say progressive, I mean like smart. I'm not talking progressive like a Bernie Sanders would say. This guy wants to tax you. Think of it. Think of it. This guy wants to raise your taxes to 90%. No, no, think you'll have to move out of this. I love this area, by the way. I've been here many times. Great golfing area, right? We love it. No more golf if Bernie said no more golf. No, no, you won't have any golf anymore. They won't be, you won't have any money left to beat golf. You'll be paying it in taxes. This guy is a total disaster. And I'm not saying that. I'll tell you what. Uh, you know, Hillary said, well, I'd like to run against Trump. Believe me, this poor Chuck Todd, meet the press. He's, his show is dying, and he keeps saying, do it, do it. But I never liked it. You know, I just, he never treated me fairly. So I do a show. He gets the highest ratings he's had in years. He went from, like, uh, believe me, I won't even give you the numbers. They were massive, the numbers, right? I saved his life. And then he goes, Hillary Clinton said that uh, she would most like to run against Donald Trump. And uh, yes, and they're looking forward to it. Trust me, the last person. She's already gotten a dose last night. Do you agree? She had a tough night. She had a tough night. She had a tough night looking at the beauty pageant, okay? So Hillary Clinton said, and here's Chuck Todd, and he's a nice guy. I'm not trying to knock him. Please don't be insulted, Chuck. But she says she doesn't like him. But he doesn't treat me right. So he goes, the Clinton campaign said they'd most like to run against Trump, like I'm some kind of a sap. So I call him, I say, Chuck, let me explain something. When they say they want to run against me, that means they don't want to run against me. Do you understand that? Do you understand? It's reverse psychology. They say they want to run against me. First of all, I'm winning and tied in the polls now, and I haven't even hit her yet. But look at what happened to all the guys I hit. They're gone, Zoe. They're gone. Or they're failing badly, okay? And they'll be gone soon. But Hillary Clinton, think of it. I say, so Chuck, report it like properly. Trust me, they don't want to run against Trump. The last thing she wants in her whole life is her, this was only, I did this in like 15 minutes, what happened to them. Because the husband wants to come, and she wants to accuse me of things, and the husband's one of the great abusers of the world? Give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. So the last person she wants to run against me, now here's the story. Look, here's the story. It's very simple. So I, I announced, and I was talking about trade. I was talking about the wall. I was talking about the borders. I was talking about uh, Obamacare. I was talking about Second Amendment will be saved, by the way. Second Amendment. It will be saved. The Second Amendment is going to be with us. So if I'm president, you know, they're doing everything. They want to get rid of the bullets now. They're doing everything they can. Think of Paris. Think of Los Angeles. Think if you had some guns in Paris on the good side, right? They had no guns. Paris is the toughest gun laws in the world, folks. And France, I mean, you get caught with a gun. It's, the only one that has guns are the bad guys. So they go in these various places. They call the guy the mastermind. He's a moron. I mean, this guy was a moron. I call him the guy with the dirty hat, right? They got him so good. By the way, the French police did a great job, and our Los Angeles police did a phenomenal job. They did a great job. But think, wouldn't it be wonderful if, let's see, this guy right here in front of me, he's a tough guy, this guy with the hat, with a lousy head of hair, but he's a strong-looking guy right here. This guy right there, see? And that one. Wouldn't it be nice if they had a gun on their waist? Somebody. Him, him, him. So that when they start, you know what they were doing in Paris? Get over here, boom. Get over here, boom. Your turn, get over here, boom. 130 people with more to follow because there are people that are so badly injured right now in hospitals. Other people are going to die. Same over there. These are people 
that gave a party in honor of their marriage. There's something going on, folks, it's wrong. They gave him a party, they worked there, they gave him a party. She came in on a fiance permit or some nonsense, and she was radicalized. And he was probably radicalized by her, or he was already radicalized. And people knew that they were radicalized. And people in the area knew that they had bombs all over. Who the hell doesn't know? You're the next door neighbor. And they didn't want to talk about it. You got to report these people. We got a real problem. You got to report them. No more nonsense. They didn't report them. And the reason they didn't is because they don't disagree with them so much. Okay, believe me. It's not because they were afraid. You saw the one that wasn't politically correct to report them. They didn't want to report them. I mean, give me a break. So we have to change. So it started off with me where I was going to talk about trade. I was going to talk about all the things. I was going to talk about the military building it up. I was going to do all of this. But after Paris and California, and there'll be others because they have no fear of us. But after Paris and California, I've totally changed. And my poll numbers went up 10 points. It's amazing. It went up 10 points. I said, why? Do you think it was the debate? Because I did good in the debate. They said, no, people view you as a tough cookie that's not going to take this crap. You know, that's what it is. And now I talk about protection. I talk about, trust me, the trade, oh, that's so easy for me. I got the greatest guys in the world. They're going to come in. They're going to do a great job. I'm going to do something myself. I always talk about Ford. They're going to build a plant, two and a half billion in Mexico. Not going to happen with me. That stuff, those deals are no good. Ford's leaving. They're closing plants all over Michigan to build a plant in, in Mexico. How the hell does that help us? Okay, who are the people that think this is a good thing for us? And in the meantime, in Michigan and other places, we have plants closing all over the place. And they're spending, think about a two and a half billion dollars. Then they're gonna sell cars, trucks, and parts into the United States, no tax, no nothing. I'll say, you're gonna to have to pay a tax, folks. And you know what? Ford will say, if you have to pay a tax, we're gonna stay in the United States. I mean, it's very simple. It's very simple. How about two weeks ago, Nabisco announced the big, Chicago. They announced they're gonna leave Chicago with one of their big plans, and they're gonna move it to Mexico. What's my statement? We're not eating Oreos anymore, right? No more. But I don't want this. It's not going to happen. They're going to, make, they're going to make product and they're going to sell it into the United States? Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And by the way, I'm a free trader, I believe. But you've got to be smart. I mean, we got to get something. We don't get anything out of anything. We don't get anything. We lose on everything. That Iran deal was a disaster. By the way, think of the Iran deal for one second. I always said, and this came to me two weeks ago. I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. I'm very disappointed with myself. <laughs> the Iran deal is the worst deal I've ever seen negotiated, okay? I'm wrong. You know what the worst deal is? Iran's a part of that one, too. We gave them Iraq. That's even better. Think of it. We gave Iran Iraq. Iran has the biggest. Think of it. They're going to have the richest. Oil. If you go to Iraq, take a look among the largest oil reserves in the world. We gave them, by decapitating Iraq and then leaving, because frankly, once we did it, we should have kept 20,000 troops or something. We give Iraq. So not only did they make a great deal in terms of the Iran deal that we know, having to do with nuclear, we also gave them Iraq. We gave them Iraq that they've been after for 100 years. We handed it to them. So now they have the largest oil reserves among in the world. That's even better than the original deal. I mean, whoever's representing Iran is doing a hell of a job, okay? If that was a stock, you gotta buy some. So we are not gonna have deals like that with me. It's not gonna happen. We're gonna become rich again, we're gonna become safe again, and we're gonna become strong again. And. And you're going to remember this moment. This is going to be an important moment for all of us. The one thing I have to say and I have to ask you to do, go out and vote. It's going to be your turn. Number three. Remember, it starts on February 1st with Iowa. We go to New Hampshire. Then we go the following. So three weeks. We got four weeks to go, and then we have three weeks after we start. No matter what's going on in your life, you got to go and vote. Because if you don't, it's not going to happen. Don't sit back and say, oh, Trump's going to do well. He's a 
The more we can win by, you know, the more power we have, in a sense, because it's a, like a mandate. But you got to go out and vote. And I will tell you this. It's been an honor to be here. I love this area. I love the people here. It's been an honor. But we will make America great again. I promise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Donald Trump working his way through the audience here in Hilton Head, South Carolina. This will be his final campaign appearance in the state uh, for the year with the primary there on February 20th, opening up our phone lines here on C-SPAN to hear your thoughts about what you heard from Donald Trump, 202-748-8921, the number to call for Republicans. No matter which mouth you feed on a two-headed snake, it still shits the same turd. But lucky for you, you have Mox News. 
more than 10 years, more than 60,000 videos. Mox News has been filtering the nonsense and illuminating the bullshit from your mainstream media. Turn off your TV and turn on to Mox News. For over a decade, documenting the socio-political events that have etched and carved the pathways that define today's modern mess, Mox News has been providing clarity while faithfully bringing you today's relevant stories 100% commercial free and subscription free. And just like Lady Liberty vows to remain free. But at this time, we're asking you for your help, your patronage, and your support to keep the lights on and the videos rolling. For less than 17 cents per day, you can become a basic subscriber knowing that your donation is truly making a difference that will help continue bringing the new stories that make a difference in your life. Turn on, tune in, and drop a couple dimes today by clicking the link below or visiting moxnews.com and show your support at any level from a single one-time donation or dedicated monthly subscriber, do it now in less than two minutes. All donations are safe, securely processed, and verified using PayPal, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover Card. As always, we're sure you'll find something of interest each and every day. This holiday season, give the gift of Mox. MoxNews.com